Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Mondays with Mickey. Thank you so much, Jason, for joining us again today. Uh, most of you know that Jason Eby presented for us last spring, and we do have a recording to that, by the way, if anybody needs it, I'll send that out. So let me go ahead, and even though he needs no introduction, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Jason again to everybody this morning. Jason Eby, IOM, has a passion for Chambers of Commerce and has been leading Chambers of Commerce for nearly two decades. He believes in the positive power and influence Chambers have in their communities. What you may not know is that he is a Louisianan living in Arkansas life with his wife and four children. Because of Jason's job, he travels all the time, although I'm guessing maybe not this year. But the place he would prefer to be is Dollywood with his family. That's right, Jason's a not-so-secret Dolly Parton fan. He's likely never heard of Game of Thrones, but probably knows every song done by the Gaithers. Uh, for those of you who have no idea who the Gaithers are like me, because I'm a Game of Thrones fan, I read all the books years before they hit HBO, uh, they are a Southern Gospel vocal group. Most importantly, Jason knows more about sponsorships and total resource campaigns than most folks. If you joined our earlier webinar with this last spring, as I mentioned earlier, that was made quite clear. Lastly, Jason is able to provide Chambers with innovative approaches to fundraising and how to move toward greater non-dues revenue that many have never before experienced. Thanks to the four states who made this possible, Illinois, Michigan, Kentucky, and Indiana, we'd like to welcome Jason back. Thanks, Jason. Take it away. Thanks so much, Lisa, and it's good to be back with y'all for sure. Uh, you know, as we find ourselves in this new, uh, new place of whatever we want to call it. You know, everybody keeps saying new normal, and honestly, I don't think we're even there yet. Uh, as we just try to figure out how to kind of navigate this road that I think we're about to come to in what we call recovery, but was more than excited to accept the invitation to conduct today's uh, kind of interactive webinar with y'all. It's not just about hearing me today for sure, um, but to hear from you of the opportunities that you have developed uh, through this COVID time, uh, new, fresh, innovative ideas. Uh, and what I have learned through talking to Chambers for the last months, how many ever that is, it just kind of feels like one big long day, I'm sure, uh, it, to y'all as it does to me. Uh, but, you know, some things that are we're redoing, we've done in the past. Some things we've kind of taken off the shelf that has been there for a while, kind of dusted it off and uh, doing it just kind of in a different way. So some things that you might share today, uh, don't feel if you think, well, God, it's not the newest and freshest thing, but it's worked for us. That's more of what we want to hear is what's worked for you. Uh, this is 60 sponsorship ideas in 60 minutes. Uh, this is a, uh, a session that we have been fortunate enough to facilitate for ACCE the last four years. Uh, just a few months ago, we did one virtual, so our first virtual one, and it was quite fun because what I loved about virtual that we don't necessarily always get to have at the conventions uh, is that as they were, uh, all, all the uh, suggestions were coming through, people were able to show their props and kind of show their logoed wear if they had something and those type of things of what the sponsor was on. Uh, so as you're thinking through your ideas that you might want to share, uh, if you've got some things that are around you or uh, in your office that you might want to kind of do a show and tell, uh, feel free uh, as we do that. And so as we kind of go through that, I wanted to share that so that you can kind of maybe go ahead and start me thinking about it. But this is really kind of how uh, the next hour we're going to kind of work together. You all, I am sure, have become Zoom uh, just absolute experts uh, through this course. Uh, we just kind of had to, didn't we? Um, so if you want to share an idea, if you will raise your hand in Zoom, uh, they will be looking for those hands raised. They are going to get that information to me. 
Uh, you know, the beauty of technology, when you're running several different screens and have a phone and all that, you know how it is behind the scenes. But they're going to be getting me your name. Uh, I'll call you, and then you will be elevated from attendees to a panelist so we can see you. Yes, this is about seeing one another. And again, how are you going to show and tell if we can't see you? So make sure you have your cameras on for that. But they'll elevate you to a panelist. I'll start a timer and you have a minute to talk about your idea. Anything really to do with sponsorship, it might not even necessarily be about, um, you know, a specific sponsorship saying we've sponsored this. Maybe it's a program that you've created that allowed additional sponsor opportunities. Maybe it's a new benefit to a sponsor that you've already uh, offered in that regard. Um, so think about sponsorships in many different ways uh, as we look at that. But uh, as I bring you on, if you'll say your name, your chamber and kind of give us a point of reference about how big you are in membership. So if you'll share those three things within your minute and then kind of take off your idea, uh, you'll hear uh, the siren after the uh, countdown happens. And so that just kind of politely tells you to your minutes over with, uh, we gotta get to the next one. So uh, kind of keep them condensed. What I'd also tell you is feel free to share multiple ideas, but we only want one idea per minute. So uh, share your idea, uh, flesh it out as much as you can in a minute, and then feel free uh, to raise your hand again and they'll bring you back in if you have a subsequent idea in that regard. So really that's how we're gonna run today. Uh, hopefully get a lot of new ideas. So feel free to go ahead and start raising your hands uh, so that they can start, to start getting the line ready for me. Uh, again, this is about you to interact, to hear what you have to say um, in this particular process. So uh, raising your hands, they'll see it, they'll give you your names and we'll start. Uh, but just as y'all kind of work up the nerve. Now, come on, we're all chamber people. We all got our chamber cheeks on and want to share some ideas. So y'all go ahead and uh, begin to uh, plan on what you're going to say and raise your hand. But I will start with just kind of some general sponsorship uh, thoughts as we are waiting for the first names to come through. But what I would tell you early in the process in the fall and uh, even while I, even around the time that I was talking to you all uh, in that webinar early in the spring, you know, a lot of people were asking, you know, how is sponsorships going to change? What are sponsorships going to look like? And kind of everything, you know, we really don't know what tomorrow is going to look like, much less in a few months. Um, and in that process, as we really began to look at sponsorships and as we began to look at different opportunities, what we began to find is sponsorships aren't changing all that much as you look at them. Sponsors are, but sponsorships aren't. Uh, if they are great sponsorships, if they're created in a good way, if they're created in a, a, in a substantive way that really uh, allows you to grow uh, sponsorship income and opportunities, uh, because truly what I would tell you at the heart of any sponsorship that you're gonna think about, hopefully any sponsorship ideas that you're gonna get, um, you go through a process of thinking through really sponsorships, good authentic sponsorships are about access to an audience. And so while that audience might not be in a room anymore and it might be virtual until we can kind of get back there, uh, that's what a great sponsorship is rooted in and getting people in front of that audience that they want to penetrate. And so what we have found through this time is that some sponsorships are just uh, the same, but the sponsors are changing. Uh, we know in all of our communities that some companies uh, aren't doing as well as they were doing in January and February this year. Some others are just kind of killing it in what they do, and they're having some new opportunities. Um, I'll share this quick story with you uh, as we're waiting on somebody. Uh, yes, we're saying don't be shy. Raise your hand. We want to hear your ideas. That's what today was all about is you sharing your ideas through this process. But um, we are conducting a sponsorship campaign currently as we do all over the country. Uh, but Roanoke, Virginia just started their first total resource campaign sponsorship drive. And one of the very first sponsorships that came, uh, came through the campaign was a Catholic school sponsoring the annual meeting of the chamber for 2021. And it's something that you typically don't see. It's not a sponsorship that they had had in the past, as in, oh, I'm sorry, sponsorship they'd had, the sponsor, not. It was the first interaction uh, up and beyond membership dues before. So when we started talking to the, to the volunteer that had secured it and the, the Catholic school, it was like, why now? Why sponsor now? And they said, well, if we're honest, 
uh, that target audience of who's at your annual mem uh, membership meeting is more in line of the clientele for who uses our school. And where we are with the current school system and all of that, uh, we just have a lot more uh, people and in interest into our program. So we wanted to align ourselves with the audience. So it is all about the audience in that regard. Um, so with that, I said a little bit, now we're gonna wait on you. Uh, there are 45 of you here today. I am sure one of you have done something uh, during this COVID time uh, to bring in some additional revenue. So raise your hand and they're gonna let me know and then we're gonna start this process off. Uh, but think through, what have you been doing? How have you gotten some money either that you didn't have in January and February? How have you maybe repurposed some benefits uh, that uh, you have developed It had to do maybe virtual rather than in person? Uh, so with that, I think we have our first one. Uh, Rex Richards is in the room. And so we'll wait for him to uh, show his face so we can see him and uh, let him become unmuted and give us that opportunity. And then we'll have a minute with Rick to, Rex to give us his idea. So Rex, can we see you? Can we hear you? There he is, on mute. Let's see, we can't hear you. Amy, can we unmute him by chance? There he is. There, there we are. There we are. Right. This is something that we're going, we do prior and after our COVID and it, we've been successful and I've done this in several of my chambers. Okay. Uh, Rex Richards, Valpo Chamber of Commerce, Valparaiso, Indiana, membership of 900. Okay. We do a business appreciation luncheon in which members are pre-selected to invite uh, their clients to a lunch where we bring in a major speaker and we pay the speaker some extra money, you know, bring in someone that will really be informative to our members and give every one of our um, honored guests who is a uh, member, who is a client of the host, a plaque. And we give them like three, six seats at a table. We sell it for a dollar, dollar amount, and it has always been very successful. What a great idea, and I love it, like you said, pre or post COVID, but how much more do we need it right now for those businesses that might have struggled a little bit and came through and persevered to show their appreciation to their clients? Good idea, thanks for that, Rex. Nancy. Okay, can you hear me? We got you. Okay, I'm uh, with the Jasper Chamber in Jasper, Indiana, and we are a community of about 15,000, and we have about 400 chamber members. So this year, we did not feel that it was appropriate to hold our annual meeting the way we normally do, and we would have probably about 400 people to attend our annual meeting. We also, of course, use it as a fundraiser. So this year we hired a company to do a video for us and we interviewed some uh, chamber board members and some CEOs within the community. So the video has not been released yet. That will be the middle of October. But in doing that, we decided to go ahead and seek sponsors like we normally do for our annual meeting. And we, uh, we lowered the rate a little bit, so that could be controversial, but we didn't feel like people were getting a dinner and those kind of things out of it. But when it's all said and done, we will probably net around $6,000. And for our chamber, that's probably about what we would net every year on our annual meeting anyway. So we felt like it was a good move. And uh, we're not like 
videoing a fake annual meeting. We're just not having the annual meeting, right. um, but the video would be will be released uh, through various means of uh, Facebook and um, emails and other public releases. But we're very happy with the net result of raising about six thousand dollars. Well, great. That's a good one. And what I love is the six thousand net a pre, uh, before about six thousand net here doing it a little differently and. That's what I'm hearing from a lot of chambers is, well, if we cancel this, we've got to fill this deficit, but you might not necessarily be filling that deficit if you don't have the expense out. So what's the net value that you need to bring in? So great repurposing there, uh, restructuring a good product at the end. Thanks for that, Nancy. Brad? Jason, how are you? I'm great, you? Doing wonderful, thanks. Brad Klopfenstein from the uh, Greater Lawrence, Indiana Chamber of Commerce in Central Indiana. Uh, 200 to 250 members. Uh, I got hired the second week of February this year. So, oh. um, welcome. I, well, thank you. Thank you. But uh, obviously, with COVID hitting, I was under the gun to make myself and our chamber relevant. Um, so, really, we did three things. The first thing I started doing was Zoom chats just like this, but with our elected officials. And that was mostly just so that we were staying active, giving people an opportunity to still be involved with the chamber and obviously appealing to uh, some of our elected officials in the area. Um, we started doing a cruise in in our little downtown area and just inviting people to bring out their classic cars. All the car shows got canceled. They started coming in and in the beginning people were able to do carry out but now it seems to be helping our local restaurants and just on a whim I put out a invitation to the governor of Indiana to be our speaker at our annual membership conference I never thought he would attend, and I never thought it would happen, but he's going to be speaking to us this Thursday. Wonderful. Great opportunities. And, hey, nothing like getting in the deep end and learning how to swim. So welcome and uh, great ideas there. Absolutely. Things that we're doing and uh, bringing relevance. All perfect there. So thanks so much, Brad. Uh, have gotten some things in the chat, so in case you haven't seen them yet, and of course, raise your hand and go ahead. We'd love some additional ideas. Uh, this is in the form of a question um, has, uh, from Rhonda Wiles. Has anyone done a QR scavenger hunt or something similar to showcase area restaurants, retail, or learning options? Uh, I think that's what that says. Little to no cost for chamber attendees, potential members, and community members. Um, she phrased it as a question, but she's got the idea there. So I don't know if she's offering the idea or saying, hey, I need help in putting it together. But that is something that is definitely, we've seen very successful in some opportunities across the country. And I'll say definitely back when we were kind of in that, you know, closed down, everybody in type situation, uh, some chambers really rose to the top and allowed opportunities to kind of uh, view around town, uh, kind of just getting kids out of the house and driving around and kind of having that particular opportunity. And what I would say is also kind of think about it. Um, I had a question the other day from a chamber that said, well, you know, uh, we, we've seen cash mobs and uh, on our YGM Facebook page, we did a Facebook Live of really kind of how to put together a cash mob. Um, and in that particular process, uh, through how it worked, people said, well, you know, that seems to be very retail. How do you do something for service providers or maybe air conditioner companies or insurance agents or those type of things? And cash mobs aren't really made for that. They're really made for that transactional aspect. But you could easily do kind of a QR scavenger uh, hunt uh, for some of those service providers and putting uh, tags or clues maybe about their building or where they're located or maybe hit some historical data, um, those particular types of uh, things to just draw people there that they kind of got to figure it out to get there and then those chambers could have a QR code in their win I mean those members could have a QR code in their window or something so you don't have to worry about too much interaction if that's the case um, and you know when it kind of gets through then the chamber uh, could give a prize away or uh, some chambers have even had a higher uh, prize opportunity because people had to pay to kind of get the clue list 
and those particular types. So a lot of fun activity and just kind of moving some things around. Uh, so hopefully that kind of gets you some ideas to get started uh, there, Rhonda. Uh, let's see, Trisha Miller says she doesn't have a audio speaker today, but she is from the Batesville area chamber. She has about 340 members. Um, and so while we're gonna read through her example, you all be raising your hand to kind of get in line. We need some more people in our queue here. Want to hear what you're doing. But she said, they are starting a new program, Taking Care of Business. We will feature a new business, each business within a sector each week. Uh, we are also starting 20 reasons for 20 days why I become a member. Then we will have our membership appreciation day on October the 8th, where we'll offer a membership drive that day. So things kind of building up and bringing in. So some good opportunities there. Uh, let's see. Uh, so good idea there, Trisha. What I loved about COVID, or that's kind of sounding bad, loved about COVID. I really don't like anything about COVID, but it has created some positives on the on the flip side of this is it's made us think differently and some new things. Um, so Nancy, come on in and give us a second good idea. There okay. she is. Okay, I think I'm on here now. You are, I see you and hear you. Well, we have developed a very great relationship with our small business development center. And we have utilized their services numerous times for presentations during the past several months uh, through uh, a Zoom type of a, a presentation. But anyway, they recognize this so that when they had some dollars to give um, for some COVID, um, maybe CARES relief, I'm not really sure. I can't remember where the dollars came from. They actually approached our chamber and asked us to write up kind of a narrative and also give some dollar values on things that we had done. And so we submitted to them um, uh, dollars of, of over seven, almost $8,000 worth of things that we felt like added value. And they're considering that and probably we're gonna, gonna be getting a check for $5,000 and that will come from the Small Business Development Center. So I guess my point is any of those relationships that you can build are very important because in the end, it'll be recognized that you're doing things, they're doing things, but you're partnering together to do things together that benefit all of our members. Wonderful. Great. And while I've got you there, before you go, I see in the chat, somebody asked, how much did you charge to watch the video for your event? Was there a fee to that or no fee? We're not charging anything to watch that and we haven't released it yet. But whenever we do, no, we weren't planning on charging to do it because we had sponsors for it. Perfect. Good answer there. Um, thank you so much for that. And I would tell you, I've heard a lot of chambers say through those partnerships, they've been able to kind of access that those CARES uh, dollars a little indirectly in that. Uh, and I, I'll add to uh, Jen's question on how much you charge uh, for the uh, events and those type of things. And then I see somebody ask, uh, does anybody have created specific sponsorship benefit packages? I'll kind of take that all together and of course if you've got some specific examples we want to hear them from you and see them from you but what i would tell you is as you are building those benefits um you want i had somebody phrase this question to me before and i really kind of turned it back to them because they were like how do we monetize the virtual how do we get money from zooms and how do we get money from all of these other opportunities that we're doing differently and what i would say is don't look for opportunities to sponsor Zooms or to sponsor uh, different platforms that you might have or different things on maybe social media, but use them as benefits to increase your current sponsorship costs. Because again, if it's about an audience, people will pay sponsorships to get the access to the audience. They don't care necessarily if it's virtual or in person, they want to get in front of there. So if you, I've had a number of chambers say, you know, this was really pre-COVID, but you know, oh, we uh, put a sponsorship on our Zoom background. So everything that we do, there's a Zoom background uh, and there's a sponsor there. Well, you might have kind of cut your nose off to spike your face a little bit because depending on what that cost is, 
needed to be pretty hefty to take care of all the other sponsorships that you either were going to have to pivot to doing something different or doing it in a different way because you've given up some kind of area that you could have had uh, uh, your current sponsors being recognized on. So you want to think about using the virtual and quite frankly, the attendance as benefits in that regard, in that charge. Now, I am one to tell you, do not be afraid to charge at all. Charge at this point, I mean, everybody's charging now. You just as a chamber saying we need to get this information to the community, uh, doesn't necessarily fit. You've got to make your payday at the end of the day as well. And so again, it's access to information in that regard. Uh, I have been getting lots of questions about, well, what do we do with lunches or what do we do with dinners? And, you know, people put that cost in there. Well, let's just say you had a, for easy math, I do easy math. Let's say we had a hundred dollar annual ticket dinner. Well, we're not coming in person. And so, you know, $40 of that maybe would have been paid for food. Well, people don't know that it pays you, it costs you $40 now. Um, they just know they're doing a hundred dollar ticket where they get some food and go around. So you might want to consider purchasing some gift cards or gift certificates to restaurants in your community, still charging what you always charge. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be a $40 gift card if that's what you want to do, because that's how much you would have paid. Uh, but then you can kind of go give them that. But you kind of look through it at that regard. So always I would tell you to keep some money. Um, going in both of those particular aspects. So again, raise your hand. We want to see you. I'm being told that there's some things in the chat. So I'm going to kind of do a Zoom faux pas and I'm going to look at the chat while I'm talking to you, making sure that we give all of your ideas or questions, but feel free to come on in here. Um, Trisha Holmes says, we have been holding all of our events on Zoom. We currently have been offering a sponsorship opportunities for our government updates and our community conversation on diversity inclusion. They have went amazingly well. Absolutely. I think those are great opportunities, especially when it comes to those two types of conversations. Um, was with a chamber in Texas last week, and their CEO was saying, you know, how many times she has talked to uh, national and state elected officials via Zoom, um, and really that she is beginning to wonder if that's going to kind of maybe be not necessarily a replacement for, but an enhancement of a fly into Washington trip or to the state capitol because more people might be comfortable here. And so again, you're thinking through those particular opportunities uh, that you might not have had before, or had it in a different way. While we're talking about governmental affairs, um, the government updates, I'll give you this little bit of uh, sponsorship uh, a sponsorship nugget, if you want to say, as a case. Uh, we offer these every uh, Wednesday on our Facebook page, just kind of some sponsorship things that might enhance your sponsorship opportunities. But when you are sponsoring or trying to find a sponsor, create a sponsorship for governmental affairs, public policy, uh, legislative affairs, whatever you might want to call it, advocacy work, it's really about real estate. Uh, real estate is all about location, location, location. Uh, public policy sponsorships are about the same thing. The first location that you factor in when pricing those sponsorships is all about the location of where the event's going to be held. Is it in Washington? Is it in your state capital? Is it local? Uh, is it somewhere local in a governmental office or just at a luncheon where the officials are going to come to you? That location can determine cost. Second location, the sponsor wants to know what proximity they are going to have to the elected official. The closer that proximity, the higher the cost can be. So if I get to introduce the elected official, if I get to have a pre or post uh, discussion with that elected official, it's about that. Uh, the third location is the perception of the proximity to the elected official. What I mean by that, it means that the, the sponsor is really looking at how they are going to be perceived by their peer group in their relation to being closer to that elected official. So if it's just an overall sponsorship where nobody kind of really gets to have access to that elected official, not typically as valuable as if they are able to announce it, then all their peer groups get to see them sitting by that and that takes a lot of uh, value increase there. So if you're thinking about some sponsorships there, 
I'd give you that little uh, note there. Um, Brad says, we have restarted in in-person events, but are offering a virtual option that those who are not comfortable attending in person can purchase. Whatever you would have spent on food or beverage for that person is being donated to a local food pantry. Awesome idea. Um, so, uh, you know, you just can't beat still having programming and being able to give into your community in a good way. And again, um, it keeps those dollars kind of level. Uh, what I would tell you when it comes to those type of things in your ticket pricing, you don't necessarily want to get into, it's my recommendation, you don't want to get into uh, a COVID price and a non-COVID price. You want to have it as, much, as close as you can to previous years because our members have very short memories. And so even if we are deducting the price for the meal or deducting the price for the uh, room rental or something, if we do that for too long, a, a couple of more months, a few more months, by the time we go back to normal, our members are only gonna see that we increase the cost. They're not gonna see that we're getting it back to pre-COVID cost. So keep them as level as you possibly can in that. Uh, Amy says she is calling out her Kentucky friends. She knows some of you are on here. You all have great ideas, and so she wants to hear from you. Um, that might mean she doesn't want to hear from me as much. No, I'm just joking. That's fine. Um, so definitely, uh, they are. we need some of you. We need some of you to uh, give those ideas. See how just giving an idea, we can kind of build upon it and build upon it or see how it's interacting. Uh, many of you were interested in some of Nancy's suggestions. Uh, so see, we're, we're gaining here. So feel free to share. Uh, there is nothing off limits here uh, in that regard. Uh, Trisha Miller just said, we took our golf outing event and added more package deals, which helped us add 6,000 to our bottom line this year. Um, and she's had an audio. That's why I'm reading her. Um, but I want to hear from you. So you get in line while I'm finishing this. Um, she had an auction, a get out of jail, a hand grenade toss, a raffle, a one in one. Uh, instead of adding another event, she just basically increased her existing event. And I said, that's what you look to. Sometimes we just kind of get so event burnout that it's like, ah, but we can just add to what we're currently doing and net 6,000 more to the bottom line. So good job there, Tricia. And Deanna, thanks for joining us. Good to see you. Um, You're and, welcome. And so what She's Kentucky, have? Jason. Kentucky, Kentucky, right there. You answered the call. Great job. Yes, yes. That's right. <laughs> and what I'll say is, see, people, she's in the car. We don't mind where she is. If you're in your living room in your PJs, we all are in our PJs these days. So it doesn't matter if you are afraid to be out. Come on in. We're all family. We're all welcome. So with that, Deanna, give us your idea. Okay. Well, I got a donation from a local meat uh, store. They just, they sell all fresh meat and that they gave us a hundred dollar gift certificate. I got Walmart to give us a Blackstone griddle. And then I had a local manufacturing that makes cornhole boards. I had them give us a cornhole board. And now we're selling chances for that package for $5, very cheap, but four for 20 is the best deal is what we tell them. And uh, we're selling chances for that. So I got three donations and it's the COVID backyard package. Perfect. I love that idea. I love she gave it and she didn't even get the buzzer. That's even more awesome. But what I will <laughs> love about it is thinking through all those options. One, I hear a lot of times, well, I, I, we don't want to ask for donations right now. You know, it, it's hard and, and we can understand that. But at the same time, it's not hard for everybody equally. And so we can ask targeted in that regard. The other aspect that I love about it is you use the aspect of we all just want to get out somewhere. And so just that thought process that you build out in those options, I uh, can't wait to see how much you get on that. When's the drawing? Um, it's Friday. Okay. Well, we'll look forward to hearing the results. We take credit cards if anybody wants to buy a chance for it. Hey, absolutely. Give her a call. Give her a call. Thanks so much, Deanna. Appreciate it. Thank you. And Kylie, come on in. All right. Hear me and see me? I can hear you and see you. 
That's All right, so we are the Marion Grant County Chamber of Commerce in Marion, Indiana, um, around 350 members. So right in like the heat of the pandemic, we had a lot of community members that just wanted to help. They wanted to donate, they wanted to um, do something. So we partnered with United Way and Community Foundation. Um, and so folks, community members donated money. We took that money and went and bought $10 gift cards from um, chamber members and then gave them those $10 gift cards to frontline worker chamber member businesses. So um, it was supporting both ends, um, those small businesses that needed the support at the time, and then also um, honoring those frontline members. So um, all in all, we ended up passing through about $10,000, wow. uh, over $10,000, just community member donations. Um, so really at the time, there wasn't much of anything in it for us. We weren't um, we didn't have any skin in the game. Um, we were just, we were building rapport with our members by going in and buying large chunks of gift cards um, and then supporting those other frontline members. So um, there wasn't much force at the time, but now that renewals are coming around, um, we're seeing those both ends of that, both sides are yeah. renewing quicker than usual. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think that's where you are in, in this particular time frame is it doesn't have to have that immediate transactional uh, perk as a sponsorship check or something, but you're doing what the chamber is meant to do, and that's being a connector. So we're working with community partners. And then while there is always, I'm a cha former chamber exec recovering here, so I understand we always are going to ask for donations and opportunities, and there's that value there. But when we can be seen as getting money into that infusion of businesses, that's really when that renewal becomes so easy in that regard as well. Again, not everybody affected is equal. So paying with some to then go affect others. Great connection there. Good idea. Thanks so much for that. Um, so get some more uh, attendees raising your hand. What I will add to that in, in a regard, well, honestly, I started reading the chat and something just went right through my head. See what I get for uh, for uh, trying to multitask. But let's see, Diane says, uh, we are currently planning our annual award banquet to be held at the beginning of December in a hybrid format, of course, limited to 100 persons, uh, professionally live streamed uh, somewhere else. Uh, we will be securing additional sponsors, including a remote live stream sponsor. Any others have creating spo created sponsorships for the hybrid event? Of course, we want to hear your ideas here. Uh, I will add uh, my two cents in while we're waiting on some other ideas. What I would say is if you're not thinking through hybrid events, you need to get ready. You need to be thinking about them now. Uh, not everybody feels comfortable coming together. Some locations are different in governmental oversight than others and not allowing it. Others, I have, I, I won't say I have been shocked. I anticipated it. But the number of businesses that are not allowing their employees to go to external things or even client meetings. Some businesses are saying you have to do client meetings via Zoom because of the you know, two week potential quarantine if you get affected in those type of things. So you really need to be thinking through that hybrid event. What I would tell you as a point to think through um, is a hybrid event is not just about setting up a camera in the back corner of a room so that they can kind of see just the tables or the attendees, but you really want to have some interaction um, or up close to stage or content. You want to be familiar with that in those particular aspects. But when it comes to the sponsorship aspect and what that's looking for, again, what I would tell you is don't break it down too much in having different opportunities. I think a live stream remote sponsor is absolutely fabulous. I think it's, uh, uh, it, it shows an audience that's greater than just in the room. But again, remember that it's the benefits that you can start showing access to audience a little differently. I will say um, really for about the past year and a half, two years, 
that uh, you know, pre-COVID, what we were seeing is those use of kind of social media and streaming, which now we're all just kind of calling virtual uh, due to it having different platforms. But, you know, even on an annual meeting or, uh, you know, a larger event of some sort, you know, we think we're all addicted to the Oscars red carpet or, you know, the, the Emmy pre-show or whatever that might be. You know, in that regard, you can just maybe set up a camera at the entrance and allow, um, you know, either just people to see um, in that particular regard, because at some point for an annual meeting, those type of things, I still think it needs to be ticketed. Uh, the virtual aspect needs to be a ticketed registration, not just Facebook Live, because anybody can get it in that regard, and you're going to lose your in-person ticket cost. But to stream maybe Facebook Live just to show people who's coming, you could do a Facebook Live kind of red carpet whether you have red carpet or not, but just kind of an arrival feed of who's coming in. And then you can think through, is that an additional value to your presenting sponsor to kind of run the mics there? Is that a separate sponsorship for you uh, in that regard? So really you just begin to look at opportunities uh, as they go around in that. Um, anybody else? Raise your hand. We want to hear from you. Uh, Jen Howard says we did a hybrid for our Athena program. And one of the sponsors was an audio visual company who traded service for sponsorships. So um, uh, a trade there probably helped their uh, net profits in that not having to pay for some of those services. Uh, so good opportunities there as we go through. Um, anybody else? I'm looking, I'm, I'm running a few screens. So um, again, we want to hear from you. We've got about 20 more minutes as we go through this. I will tell you one that I absolutely loved uh, during the ACCE uh, opportunity uh, that we did in July. And it's kind of one of those, I love it so much, but I kind of kicked myself that I didn't think of it myself. You know how you kind of get a good idea like that? Um, this was a chamber in Texas who said he did a, uh, he was getting ready for his annual taste of event, you know, how we kind of have a taste of with restaurants and those particular opportunities. Well, he did a drive-by take through, uh, take out, taste of. I thought it was ingenious. How many of those drive-bys have we been through uh, for vastly different number of things? In fact, uh, when he offered that, that weekend before, I was just at a drive-by farmer's market. And you just, you know, all the tents are lined up and you're just driving through and saying, I want that fruit or that vegetable. And they bring it to the car and you have that transaction there. So I thought, how genius to kind of have the tents set up, just like we typically have in booths with a taste of. And, you know, you pay a ticket price to get to go through the line and then you get samples as you're going through thought that was ingenious uh, and loved how something they were currently doing and just kind of a little tweak to do it a little differently in that thought process as we go through. So um, we check no hand. Y'all are a quiet group today. There are 42 of you uh, in this call and I know somebody has done something different than they were doing last year. Uh, and so if that, you know, something just popped in your mind when I said that, I know. And so in that particular case, raise your hand, share it with you. Um, nothing is too small or, you know, you might be thinking, oh, well, it's not all that. I've just been to that. Sometimes those are the best things in the world. Uh, again, who'd have ever thought that I'd, I'd missed a drive through taste of what a great opportunity there. Um, as we go through this. So still no hands. So you just kind of get more of me. So I'm just going to kind of keep talking until somebody raises the hand to break up. I love, love what Lisa said. I, Y'all might like hearing from me. She said love. I'll put like in there. But we do want to hear your great ideas. I mean, many of what I've just shared with you has come from me listening to other chambers and seeing those particular opportunities come through uh, the process. What I will kind of uh, mention while we're waiting, because I'm sure many of you might have experienced it, and while it, this is about generating new sponsorship ideas, uh, I think I'd be remiss if I didn't just briefly mention what do you do with sponsorships that you might have had to move over? Uh, you know, I think when we talked together, it might have been April, late April, early May, who would have ever thought 
but here we sit, you know, two days from October, still dealing with this, still thinking it's more than likely going to resonate through our 2021 to January, February, uh, at least first quarter. Uh, so there has invariably been something I am sure that you have had to cancel and move to 2021. If you've already had sponsors for that, uh, you know, people are asking all the time, how do I do that? How do I move the sponsorship, but I need the money this year because money's tight, those type of things. It might be creating something new. What I want you to be, I want, if you could take anything away from today for this hour, uh, outside of a good idea that has been shared, because there have been many of them. So thank you all for sharing. But I would tell you to take through the, oper the, the thought process that it's okay to create something new this year and then never use it again. Just because we create it doesn't mean that it all of a sudden has to become part of our program of work for the next decade. That's where a lot of us probably found the chambers that we are now running, is people just did something and then never had kind of the, the exit plan of how do we get rid of this or how do we do it just for one time. So there might be something to just create right now to take care of a sponsorship that you either needed to transfer and it might align with their target audience or it might be an opportunity that you just create it to kind of get some cash flow in. And then you're only looking at, we've got another quarter left in the 2020 year. Can you believe it? Another quarter. And so what can you do in this quarter that might be different that you don't have to always do 2021, 2022, but you could just focus on that. Uh, it was not uh, too long ago. Um, I had heard, uh, I was at a state association meeting and many of you know Anissa Starnes and uh, she does a great talk on um, really just how COVID affects the stress and how can we relieve that and, you know, do different things. And so some chambers are just bringing her in to do that webinar to either offset or not. So sometimes it's not things that even you have to create, but could reach out to get somebody else to do uh, and you get some revenue off of that. So uh, begin to think through some opportunities there. I see we've got a hand raised. And so I know she's going to be coming in as they elevate her. So this will be uh, Rudy, uh, Rudy Flores, I believe, as she comes in. I uh, can't wait to hear what she has to offer. And many of you, again, uh, we're in those last few moments here together. So uh, begin it. And I'm sorry, Rudy, I'm sorry. <laughs> I should know, you know, in my mind, I took the D and put it as a B and saw Ruby. That's all right. What affects my mind? Well, what do you have all, today? Starbucks does that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah, so uh, Lisa Weitzel from IACCE has been texting me to speak, so I'm like, all right, I'll speak. So now um, you're, you're listening. You're listening. Yeah, yeah. So um, um, we um, have been trying to rethink our events. We, we're a chamber of commerce in the city of Chicago that works as like a Main Street organization. A lot of our, our members are brick and mortar. And so we have been working with a startup and trying to actually work with more startups um, to kind of pivot what we've been doing because they're able to think outside the box in regards to what they typically offer to their customers. And so we went, um, we took two of our street festivals that would have like a big farmer's market. We have right. called Apple Fest, for instance, um, where they took all of our different businesses and each business has anywhere between two to six packages and basically did a Amazon style website of all of our local merchants. And, wow. and in this way we're, we're able to get a percentage of the transaction. The businesses get a majority of the funds. They can increase the price of their items to compensate for the percentage that we're getting. And then the um, company that we're working with, then they get the transaction fee. And so it's a win-win all the way around and they've been willing to work with us through these ideas and now right now we have a centralized pickup location like you order all the different packages put it into a cart pay one time pick your date you want to pick up and we're working with the business that's kind of like the sponsor because <laughs> now you go to that business to pick up the items and wow. so they're being able to get in front of multiple different people they might not have in the past and we're now looking to talk with um, smaller delivery companies that uh, or even the courier service uh, um, services that might not have as many um, clients at the moment because of the pandemic to see how they might be able to alter what they typically do in a normal year and kind of work with what we're, our needs are at the moment. Oh, wow. 
There's so much I love about that. So <laughs> much. Uh, I, I think at the at the crux of it, and I think that's where a lot of uh, kind of in our chamber mind, it's really operating in some business aspects that we haven't had before. And then as you take it to that next level, there's been some fear for businesses and how do we do, you know, online ordering. Maybe we weren't there. You know, I, I know there's a number of chambers that I could pull off the top of my head in the aspect that, oh, you know, this business swore they would never ship anything. They swore and then they, COVID hit and it well, to survive, we've got to do something a little differently. And so when it is a win-win, that's, I think, the best type of scenarios. And the fact that you can get a lot of some of that transaction from it. So it's not just the chamber doing something, but it's the chamber getting paid to do something. So yeah. great brainstorming there yeah. and execution. And if anybody wants to see well, um, what I'm talking about, applefestchicago.org is the okay. website. Uh, again, applefestchicago.org. You can kind of see the platform that the company built for us. And, um, and you can link over to their website and kind of see the kind of things that they do. Perfect. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Lisa, put it in the chat for us so you can just click there. I was writing it down so that we could go there too. Uh, let's see, in the chat, we've got another one. Uh, Jen Howard says they took a paid $2,000 sponsorship for a canceled event and moved it to sponsoring the daily COVID update that goes out to 900 members. The sponsor is a large hospital and they love the location of their logo on the update and the fact that it's getting out to our entire membership daily. So absolutely repurposing that, didn't have to give it away, something you were gonna do anyway. And so you end up having that transaction go through. So great opportunity there. Thanks for sharing, Jed. Pat, fee, free. That's, true. That that's right? okay. It's what true. True. Like it rhymes with true, but that's great. No problem. Well, that's why I asked. You know, with EB, I get Abby, eBay. So I shouldn't have, I just <laughs> should have said Pat. Jason, but, uh, he's from Kentucky. Another yeah. Kentucky. Yeah. Northern Kentucky. Whoop, yes, whoop. thank you. Uh, Jason, you're doing a great job today. Appreciate your enthusiasm and excitement. So, um, thank you. thing that we are thinking about doing for next year. Our two biggest events are our annual dinner, which is usually held in August. That's pretty much been canceled for this year. Golf outing we had last week, uh, in, you know, obviously in September, that's normally in May. And uh, we were thinking, you know, the weather is so much better in September, we may kind of flip-flop those things next year. So sometimes if you have events, sometimes for our annual dinner in August, we ran into problems with schools and it's oh. coming back and can hurt attendance. So. I would encourage people to use COVID to look at kind of upsetting the apple cart on their schedule of events. So there's no rules that you have to do at the same time every year. And as you said, some of these things you can do differently, maybe even for just one year, so. Absolutely love it, Pat. Uh, and I could not agree with you more wholeheartedly. I've been talking for the for several state associations for the last few months, and that is about 15 minutes of a talk that I do that 2020 if your 2021 calendar looks like 2020 you're doing something wrong because it needs to it even if it's just 2021 but flipping those things around looking a little different who knows it might work better you know the weather might be better for golf at another time so kudos to you and i would implore you all to just look at what it would be a little different um and i would say for some of you that had those annual meetings in january february that's already one of those uh, opportunities to have some question marks. Uh, you know, when you say, well, what can we do about sponsors? How can we change up some benefits? Sometimes you gotta go, you already have a great product. You don't need to change it, but you might have to change what it's offered because some of the sponsorship campaigns that we're doing across the country right now, those chambers that don't have a backup plan scheduled for January, February, or those that haven't even thought about moving it and they're just, nope, it's gonna be in January and February and if it's not, we'll deal with it then. Sponsors are questioning that. Sponsors are saying, you really having that in January? I don't know if I'm gonna put some money to that. I just don't know how it's gonna work. But if the chamber is able to say, we're scheduling it for January, but we already have a backup date for April or May. They're being a lot more loose with their dollars, but I am seeing the best response when it comes to what Pat just mentioned and saying, you know, we typically have annual meeting in January, February, 
But where we find ourselves, we just want to plan for the best. And so we're going ahead and scheduling it for April, May or August, September or whatever that might be. Um, and sponsors appreciate the foresight that comes along with that. Um, so consider that as you're thinking through sponsorships for next year. Uh, make your calendar a little different. And I think the sponsors will follow in that regard. So uh, great suggestion there, Pat. Any, let me check the chat. Y'all have been chat happy today, which I say good job um, in that regard. Let me see if there's anything else. No, we're good there. Um, so far, no additional hands. I would say we've got a, mm, we've got just a few, a few minutes left together before we will say I do today. Uh, but if you've got anything now or never, if you've got, I've been wanting to say it or I've thought about it a couple of times, now's your chance to raise your hand and come on in and chat with us through this process. Um, but while we're doing that and kind of, uh, I'll say a pre-close before we close, um, as you just think about sponsorships in general, you know, kind of what they look like, that, that's been probably the biggest question that I've got is, you know, how do sponsorships need to change and how can we do it? Um, sponsorships is psychology. That's the best thing I could tell you. And so when you put the thought through to your sponsorships about what you put in, um, you know, benefits and what you put into target audiences and what you put into programming and all of that, uh, that really is the answer. So it, it's okay if you don't see, in my opinion, you know, and that's just what's, what, what it's worth, but don't get caught up on feeling that sponsorships have to change all that much. We are living in a changed time. Everything that we have known has changed. How we do membership meetings, how we do uh, talking to our governmental affairs, how our boards are convened, how we talk to membership, our finances have changed, some of our staff has changed. We are just kind of living in this season of change. Um, but I think a lot of the times what happens is we get so caught up in this season of change that we feel if we're not changing something, we're doing something wrong, or we're behind the card on something, or, uh, you know, it's going to kind of catch up to us. I don't think everything has to change here. I think we have to be careful in what we look at and where we plan. And if you've got a good book of sponsorship, if you've got a good sponsorship product, then it's okay if you're not changing it. It will change who you maybe go seek after, who you go look to for that sponsorship. Some of the benefits might change a tad, but don't feel that you have to do this complete overhaul. Now, for some of you, uh, as I've talked about target audience and reach into the audience and connection with the sponsorship, the sponsors and them feeling like it's a business transaction rather than a philanthropic give, uh, you might go, God, that's not our sponsorships. Then you might need to be looking that this would be a good reason, a good excuse to kind of have an overhaul. Um, but what I would tell you as anything, um, and probably in some parting remarks, and then I'll throw it back to Lisa, is we have to think like businesses right now. We really kind of always need to think about uh, as businesses, but in this particular time, I don't feel that there is any business that is still in existence right now that hasn't done something different in their business than they were doing in January and February. They had to do at least one something different. Many of them have just changed the entire way they've done business. And so many of them would also tell you as you ask them, did you get it right the first time? Did you make a change and had no way how it was going to, uh, you know, th what the results are going to be? They're going to tell you, yeah, time in and time out, that they made a change, then they pivoted that change and made another change to fit that change. And so until they found what was right, that's the business market. That's the for-profit business principles of figuring it out so we can make a profit. And so in that regard, as Chambers, uh, you need to be making some changes too. Don't be fearful of the changes. If it's not right, you just can change it again in that regard. Uh, but hopefully today has given you some ideas, uh, some new, maybe some fresh uh, thoughts to go out and maybe capitalize and monetize. Maybe you found a nugget that was a missing puzzle piece to something that you were going to do. Um, we are here uh, to help you in any way that we can. We love talking sponsorships. It's what we do day in and day out all over the country is just talk about sponsorships uh, in 
pre-COVID world, COVID world, and what post-COVID world is going to look like. Um, so I know that it is probably the, uh, a good portion of many of your budgets, and we'd be happy to talk to you about that. Um, but Lisa, I'll let you take this home. Super. Thank you so much, Jason, for joining us today. Thanks for everybody on the call and for sharing your ideas. I know our Illinois folks have um, really good about using the chat box because of all of our calls. We just really appreciate your time today, Jason. We will have a recording of this to send out to all of the attendees, and we look forward to seeing you in one of our next Mickey Mondays uh, coming up. But thank you again, everybody. And lastly, just, you know, we're all in this together. We're all going to get through this together. We're all going to move forward together. Thanks to Michigan, Indiana, and Kentucky for joining us, uh, the exec associations all together in Illinois to making this, all, uh, this whole program work for us. But most importantly, Jason, thank you for your time today. It's been my absolute pleasure. Y'all have a blessed one. Thank you. You too. Thank you.